Hello, Anna. How are you? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Akash. Hello, everyone. I'm well. Thank you. Thank you for having me today with you. A very tasty conference. A lot of inspiration. It is, isn't it? I, I agree with you, even though I'm not the one to judge. But I hope you like the fact that, well, you're the last speaker of the day because that gives you like a very special focus in our today's agenda. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was quite a challenge to wait until this moment. But it must have I, been. I really it must have it. been. <laughs> but then when you think about it, what's better, to be the first one or to be the last one? When you're the first one, you don't have the actual context of the full day's event. When you're the last one, you have the luxury of being able to take an overview, a holistic outlook of the situation. And that's where we're going. So the question is, Inclusive language, this is something we've been talking about at every edition of the conference. Why do we need to talk about it again? Thank you for this question. Um, yeah, I think that there are two main reasons. So uh, when leaders commit to building an inclusive organization, uh, they tend to start with the company mission, vision, values and a promise to ensure everyone in the organization has a voice. But if they don't change the way they communicate every day with their team members, leaders are missing a crucial piece. Uh, second thing is that professionally and privately, in writing, in conversation, uh, on social media, we deal with language everywhere, we use it everywhere. So um, we all believe that it is obvious that we can use this basic tool and that's why sometimes we treat it neglectfully. Um, what is more, we forget that language is not only a reflection of our perception of the world, but through the words, we build an image, we build a space, and we pass on to the next generations. That's why I believe it is a very important aspect of creating an inclusive environment at work and beyond. Um, is the language, uh, so the language is, is this very important aspect uh, uh, that's why we, we should um, discuss it. Personally, Anna, I couldn't agree more with you. And I would even imagine things like that should be, we should be in a position where we can take them for granted. And yet we cannot, because people still find it for whatever reason so difficult to understand that one word, mm -hmm. one phrase, one comment will hurt two people very differently depending on their life's experience, depending on where they are on their mm -hmm. journey, if you like to call it metaphorically. But it's an actual truth. We all have very different sensitivities. So how does that translate to a workplace environment? And how do you think, what makes it especially important that we use inclusive language in, in a work environment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, inclusive language uh, reflects our diversity. Um, we are diverse, and it is the fact, and uh, it could be the most uh, natural thing, even a truism, uh, where it is not for the fact that the way we speak can exclude entire groups uh, from our messages. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, when, when we emphasize diversity, it means increasing the visibility of people and consequently strengthen them. Um, so inclusive language recognizes that words matter and uh, that word choice can be used intentionally or unintentionally to include or exclude others. Mm -hmm. Using inclusive language communicates with people in a way that it's respectful and brings everyone uh, to the conversation. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate goal, I believe, of inclusive language is to create an uh, environment in which everyone is empowered, um, empowered to speak and feel uh, confident that their voice uh, will be heard. Uh, it may be by choosing the use gender neutral terms, avoiding terms that make assumptions uh, and being mindful of 
historical context, uh, we are actively working to include and uh, create space for everyone to be their authentic selves. Mm -hmm. And how about scenarios when someone, for whatever reason, well, actually reasons are important, but if a given group or a person specifically doesn't think it's worth taking seriously enough, uh, thinks something opposite, like mm, maybe the world has become oversensitive, exaggerating, pushing issues where you end up in a situation where you can barely say anything not to offend someone. So if you, if you push it to this extreme, how would you comment on that? Uh, using inclusive language is an important step uh, towards making everyone feel seen, heard, and valued. Mm -hmm. So by using, uh, by choosing the use of this um, language, uh, that includes a wide range of individuals and groups which can contribute to an environment of psychological safety. Mm -hmm. We mentioned it uh, during today's conference and respectful all. Um, so promoting and using inclusive language in day-to-day -day conversation mm -hmm. uh, sends a powerful message to your team members. Mm -hmm. uh, it reinforces diversity and inclusion and score values. It shows that people are thinking about the impact of their language and behaviors so, and the benefits. Mm -hmm. Sorry, of using. In, in, okay, thank you. The benefits of using inclusive language are manifold because it contributes to a sense of belonging as people from a wide range of backgrounds feel welcomed, valued and empowered. So Anna, my last question is, um, assuming we all agree on the value of inclusive language, how do you make any organization more inclusive on that front? How do you make it have more inclusive language? So uh, my first advice would be use intentional language. So uh, be take accountability for the impact of the words and phrases you use. It means choose words and phrases that are inclusive and respect of, respectful to others and evolving uh, your vocabulary over time. Choose alternatives, words and fra phrases there is no end to alternative words and phrases that can use uh, to express ourselves and communicate with others. Uh, it is often incredibly easy and simple to select an alternative word or phrase to express yourself and communicate your message. Mm -hmm. And last but not least would be educate others. And simple act of allyship is also to speak up when others uh, intentionally or unintentionally use offensive words, phrases, or general language. Staying Perfect. silent uh, uh, can be as offensive as um, the usage of the word or phrase in the first instance. That's a super important uh, closing remark. Thank you very much for that. Anna Stopper so Yes. If I may, if I may, and last. Uh, absolutely last uh, sentence from myself and, uh, and advice. Remember, being inclusive is not about being perfect. It's about be being willing to grow, to learn and practice. So as we learn all uh, languages, the important part is to practice, practice, practice. I'm sure everyone will agree. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anna Stopel Sodek Sopolska, Human Resources Director, Head of DEI. Thank you again. Thank you so much. And over to our experts. <laughs>